Good morning, church. Hallelujah. We were at home, wherever you are, we salute your faith. Thank you, Lord. We continue to move according to the spirit of God, wave. When he wave this direction, we follow that direction, we follow. That is uh, the message you are receiving every week, like the issue of Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Father, hallelujah. Amen. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. That means if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. I know Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Holy Spirit, you cannot know Jesus. So this is an issue we are going to talk about today. Our title, Knowing Jesus. Knowing the Holy Spirit. Let someone say. Jesus. 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 If you say you know Jesus, we don't know the Holy Spirit. That is not Jesus in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a spirit, and his worshiper must do so in spirit and truth. What kind of Jesus are we talking about? Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So we take our test from Vera's book, 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. And I'll take my reading from the beginning to the end. And the John 16, you can take your reading from the beginning at your time. So that John 3, verse 27 also, will give you some clue of what we are about to talk about today. And the second Corinthians 5 verse 7 about faith. And then take it back to the second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. That one too will help you. Thank you. Let's take our reading from the book of um, First Corinthians chapter 2. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. Verse 2, for I resolved to know nothing why I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Verse 3, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive will, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Verse 5, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Hallelujah. When you now go down, you find God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit. This is verse 6. We do ever speak a message of wisdom among the mature, that is, among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. So you take your time to read to the end. Like many other books have been given to you, hallelujah. Taking your reading from verse 1 to the end, that's First Corinthians chapter 2, you will find that the spirit is the organ by which we apprehend divine things. Man's spirit is dead because of sin. The natural man, that is, the man of might and the intellect cannot understand nor receive things of the spirit. Where there's no vision, people perish. And this is what is going on now. This is what is happening in our generation. Things are perish. You cannot see Satan in the natural. I do not see Satan in the natural. 
I see Satan on the other side. Spirit world. This is where, where there is no vision. Perish. Destruction. Killing. Tell your neighbor, I do not see Satan. In the natural. I see Satan on the other side. The spirit world. That is why the Bible says, where there is no vision, People perish. Satan. Tell your neighbor, where there is no vision, people perish. What can you see here? It's impossible to see what is here with your sight. With your sight, it is impossible to see what is here with your sight. Everyone is exposed to things that are not consistent with God's work. If this thing control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian yet controlled by Satan devices. If these things control your feelings and your feelings control your faith, you can be a Christian, no doubt. Yet, controlled by what? Satan's devices. Tell your neighbor, I do not say Satan. In the natural. I see Satan on the other side. The spirit war. Tell your neighbor again. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit because that is where I can hear Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. T.B. Joshua. Yes, sir. In the spirit. But in the natural. Hmm. Can you say the life you live today? I'm more comfortable working in the spirit. That is where I can hear Jesus. God gives us a spirit to apprehend him. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. Don't forget. There has been a great miss up in the church. It is the erroneous assumption that spiritual truth can be intellectually perceived. It is possible to grow up in the church as a baby. Your father is founder of this, founder of that church, founder of that church, and learn all rights, but not know Jesus. Because Jesus is not known by those external things. Jesus is not known by those external things. In that John 16, it is perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that revealed Jesus to us. Perfectly plain that the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Jesus to us. You can read your New Testament and still never find Jesus in it. You can be convinced that Jesus is the Son of God. 
and still never find Jesus. You can be a publisher of the Bible. The publisher of the Bible. You can know about Christ dying for you. You can head this, that religious organization. You can be the founder and general overseer and still never know Jesus of Nazareth in the power of Holy Ghost. In the church, there are two Christ. You need to know the one you are worship today. There are two Christ. The Christ of story and of history and song, the baby Jesus. Then there is this Christ which the Holy Spirit reveals. Many people know about Christ, but they don't know Christ. There is a difference knowing about Christ and knowing Christ. In that John 3, verse 27, no man can receive except it is given from above. No man can receive except it is given from what? From above. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. If you are risen into Christianity, some wise fellow can raise you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit, because knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit, if you are risen into Christianity without knowing the Holy Ghost, and you become a Christian, claim you are a Christian without the Holy Ghost, some wise fellow can reason you out of it. Unless you know the Holy Spirit. Knowing Jesus is knowing the Holy Ghost. This is why you see people today, I'm a member of this church today, I don't want to go to church again. I used to be a Christian, but uh, no, I'm this, no, I'm this, no. I'm a pastor, no, I'm no more. I'm an evangelist, no, I'm no more evangelist. Some wise fellow can reason you out. If you are risen to Christianity, why? Because Christianity falls or sounds on Christ Jesus. Sounds or falls on the illumination of the Holy Ghost. It is either the Holy Spirit or darkness. It is either the Holy Ghost or darkness? The Holy Ghost is God's imperative of life. Imperative of life. If our faith is to be a New Testament faith, if Jesus Christ is to be the Christ of God, rather the Christ of history or story, the illumination of Holy Ghost will tell our heart that we are learning at Jesus' feet, not at man's feet. Are you? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is not, it's not, it's not the mind for applause. It's the mind for crying. So by reflection, because I don't see Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down. So why, why are you clapping? I cannot say Christian among you. I'm seeing religious people sitting down. 
as it should be. The way your forefather serving God, the way your father pray, the way your father fasted, this is the way you are going about serving God. The Christ of history, of story, of some baby Jesus. Who is Christian among us? Okay, if you are a Christian, can you tell me who is talking to you? Are you seeing beyond me? That is what we call Christian. If you are a Christian, you live by Holy Ghost. You'll be able to see beyond me. You can't see beyond me. You only see me talking to you. That is all you see. That is why you can go out. That is why we can do everything. That is why tomorrow you may not be able, you may not come to church if you are not here or if you are not blessed. Because you are risen into Christianity. If today is your last day, where are you going? Is there any kingdom for religious? The kingdom come, that will be done. Where are you going if today is your last day? You tell Jesus, I'm a member of this church, I go to church. Is that the excuse you are going to give? I can see Christians among you. I can see Christians. Hmm. We continue the journey. This is the message God has me to give you. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit. So thank you. If you are not filled with the Spirit, you cannot obey the written word. That is the painful part. So you mean you are just carrying Bible, and you are just reading the history part of it. Because there is no way you can obey the word of God if you are not filled. That is the most painful part of it. Where is your Bible? See, this one, you cannot obey it. You will just be reading it as a religious man. You read to preach, to teach it, but to live it is not possible. And if you cannot obey the scripture, you quench God. You quench him. <laughs> you quench him. That is the most painful part. There is reading the Bible. Carry Bible. Me, the word here is not just history. The Holy Spirit carry the writers along. That's the most painful thing. Very, very painful. Very, very painful. And many of you have read this Bible for five times. We have many publishers here, publishers of the Bible. I know there are among you that publish Bible for daily bread. Where are we going? That's the most painful part of it. Most painful part of it. Me, Bible, is irrelevant to you. Now, I will be stretching her now. You see people checking. You see people checking, but you don't know what is checking them. The resurrection power that flow within me to them, you cannot see, but you always see people checking, falling. It becomes a magic to you. Ah, what is it? Without touch, what is folly, people? You can't see because you are not filled to that. It's blasphemy. Your heart, you will not say it all, but your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is saying a lot. Your heart is blasphemy. Your heart is, is no less. You keep blasphemy. You keep seeing what you do not understand. Your heart will blaspheme. This is the problem we find ourselves. I will stand here to tell you, don't go to that church, don't go to that. Why should I say you should not go there? If you go there, you'll be able to see more. Seeing more will help your history. It will make you adequate, serving God. If that church is not good, go there. See it yourself. If you have not seen enough darkness, you cannot appreciate light. Please, you are not serving God without the Holy Spirit. If you are serving God without the Holy Spirit, you are serving God you do not know. Tell your neighbor, if I serve God without the Holy Ghost, I'm serving God I do not know. 
It is the spirit that makes us know him. Serving God without the Holy Spirit, serving God, you do not know. And this is the God our forefathers served. And this is the life you are living today. Someone keeps telling you what God says. Someone keeps telling you God says you should sleep. That is the life you want to live throughout. God says you should sleep. God says you should wake up. God says you should know. God says you should fast. God says you should do this. God says you should go to London. God says you should. Is that the life you want to live throughout? It means you are still serving God you do not know. Someone is telling you what God says. It means you don't know that God. That's why someone is telling you. For how long? Very, very painful. Tell your neighbor, very, very painful. Very, very painful. That is the way I say it. Very, 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 very painful. Intellectually perceived. Spiritual truth. We can intellectually perceive it. Very, very painful. You have to get out of it. Forget about your problem. You don't have problem. That is the only problem you have. Every other problem are no problem. The greatest problem is for you to serve God you do not know. Tell your neighbor, the greatest problem, the greatest problem. all other are not problem. The greatest problem is to serve God you do not know. Imagine your age today. How old are you? You have been serving God. That you have dream, you have to consult somebody to tell you the meaning. You have job, you want to know whether it's a good job. You want to marry, you carry it medically to know whether it's good. Spiritually, you run from one place to another to know whether it's a right thing. This is the life you have been living. And those lives are not profitable. A man cannot receive except it is given from above. But you can receive, receive from people, receive from people, receive from people. Where are we going? You say you, you are poor. You are not poor. You say you are sick. You are not sick. You are only serving God. You do not know. If you are blessed today and you still continue serving God, you do not know, you will still come back poorer. Unless you serve God, you know. Oh